thank God for another day. We thank and praise and give him glory for this lovely Tuesday. I hope everybody has had a terrific Tuesday today. We thank God for the restful weekend. And we just thank him for this day. All those who've been to work today, we hope you had a blessed day at work, as I did myself. And we hope everybody that was at home had a blessed day at home. We hope you're still being safe. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Hill Hernando Virtual Midweek Worship, where our leader is Pastor Dr. Michael O. Minor and Lady Minor. Uh, honor to Evangelist Robinson and Minister Beatty today. We just thank God for all of our ministerial staff. Welcome Facebook, welcome Zoom, welcome YouTube to our worship tonight. We hope that you are truly blessed tonight. Our call to worship is going to come from Psalms 3, verse 3, 4, 5, and 6. And when you have found that, found the word, then we will be ready to read. I thank God for another day. I just thank him that I got enough rest over the weekend that I was able to deal with everything I had to deal with today and deal with it with a peaceful mind. We just want to keep everybody uplifted in prayer, especially the Robertson family. We want to keep them lifted in prayer. You know, we, we all heard about what happened with them, and we just want to keep praying for everybody. The COVID-19 is affecting all of us. Psalms 3, verse 3, 4, 5, and 6. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people who have set themselves against me all around. God's word for God's people. Amen. And at this time, uh, Evangelist Robinson is coming with the prayer pastor. Or Okay. At this time, I'm going to come with the song and then Evangelist Robinson will come with the prayer. Okay. I need the old I need thee to thee. This evening, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you as um, as we know how, Father. Lord, we come to you this evening just to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for keeping us all day long, Father. Lord, we just thank you for bringing us this far, Lord. And we just thank you for everything, Lord, because we couldn't make it this far without you, Lord. Lord, if be your holy will, continue to bless, Father, continue to heal, continue to deliver, Father. Lord, we just need you, Lord, and we sure can't do without you, Lord. Lord, just bless and believe all over the land and the country, Father. Touch the Robinson family right now, Lord, because we know you're able to comfort and strengthen right now, Lord. 
Lord, that bless everyone that done lost loved one in this pandemic right now, Lord. Lord, we know you didn't bring us this far to leave us now, Father. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for everything, Lord. You're just so good to us, Father. Lord, I just don't know, Lord. You're just good, Lord. We just thank you right now, Lord, for enabling us to see you another day, Father. Not that we were so good, but your grace and your mercy, Lord, and we just thanking you right now, Lord. Lord, just give us the strength to go on your holy word, Lord, because we trust in only you, Lord, because we know you're able. Lord, just touch it right now, Lord, Father. Just keep on blessing. Keep on healing, Lord. Lord, we know this trouble won't last always, Father, because we know at the end it's going to be a brighter head, a brighter, brighter day ahead, Father. Lord, we just thank you right now, Lord. These blessings, other blessings we ask in Jesus' name, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Reminders for uh, this week. First, let me uh, say happy birthday to everyone celebrating the birthday in the month of December. We pray the Lord will bless you to live and enjoy many more birthdays. And happy anniversary to those who have anniversaries this month. And we're praying also for the Lord to bless you and your love to live, love, laugh, and enjoy each other for many more years to come. Good evening, good evening. I'm glad you were able to join us on this evening. We thank God for uh, what you have heard uh, thus far as we continue in this Advent season. Amen, the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We once again thank God for our most capable uh, ministerial staff, and then our associate pastors, Evangelist Beatrice Robinson, Minister Mary Bledsoe, our associate uh, ministers, Minister Willie Beatty, Minister Johnson Salisbury, and of course, our first lady, Lady Lottie Minor. Uh, thank you for joining us on tonight. Look, if you have any prayer requests, you can put it in the chat uh, or you can visit a comment. You can email us at info at thehealhernando.com or call us at 662-298-3584. After the message and the invitation, we will have our closing altar prayer. We continue to lift up in prayer those in our congregation that are going through a time of bereavement, amen, the sickness of COVID-19, going through the recovery from the COVID-19, uh, just going through. So we wanna be able to do that as well. Also, while we have you here, we want to be able to also remind you uh, that the uh, deadline, amen, is fast approaching for the Affordable Care Act. Uh, some people call it Obamacare. It ends on uh, next Tuesday, uh, December 15th. Uh, so if you have not uh, enrolled in insurance uh, for 2021, you can do so. And year round, you we can assist you in enrolling in Medicaid, the Children's Health Insurance Program called CHIP, you can give us a call, 662-298-3584. And uh, of course, we also can make you referrals to uh, the Federally Qualified Community Health Centers. So in whatever case, we'll be able to connect you uh, for uh, assistance uh, with your health coverage. Now, as we continue our best of series for uh, another week, we're gonna to go to uh, my annual address for the Mid-South Churches Cooperative Conference Baptist State Convention Annual Session, which was held uh, May 5th through 7th, 2020. And my address was on May 7th, 2020. And this focal scripture is Habakkuk 2 and 2. So we're starting to hope that you'll be blessed by the message and I'll be back afterwards. So hope you are, are blessed of the Lord as we hear the word of God. Our scripture tonight, Habakkuk uh, chapter two and verse two, it says, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. And we're gonna do use our convention theme and our convention theme for this year, as we introduce our seven year theme, is vision, and that's an acronym, V-I-S-I-O-N. Just a quick word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you uh, for blessing us this week in our annual session. We thank you for allowing us to uh, go over virtually 
and to be with us in this session. Now, Lord, let me decrease and you increase as I share a word with your people tonight in this, not my address, but your address. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we are in a new environment that we've never seen before. Uh, for many of us, before uh, the first part of this year, we had never heard of COVID, let alone COVID-19. We uh, were going along fine, the economy was humming, and, and people were doing well, and uh, we didn't really uh, have any major concerns. And then all of a sudden, a little bitty virus, some that we can't even see with the naked eye, but that little bitty virus came and turned our world up side down. And we went from having services on Sunday where we were hugging each other and giving each other high fives and praising the Lord in person to having to go to Facebook and to Zoom and to be in our homes and to be isolated and everything else. But I want you to know that amidst all of those things, God is still blessing us. I don't care what all these things that we're going through God is still good. But I believe that when the Lord gave me this vision for our convention, he knew this pandemic was going to happen. Because in our text uh, tonight, we see Habakkuk coming, and, and, and in this book, uh, it's right before the time that Judah was going to be going into exile and be defeated by the Babylonian Empire. Habakkuk was having a discourse with God. Literally, he was arguing with God in these first two chapters. He, he was arguing first, why don't you punish Judah for being such an evil nation? And then he got mad with God when God told him that Babylon was going to use Babylon to punish Judah. And he was saying, why would you use such an evil uh, country to punish Judah? And so in this second chapter, what God is saying, Habakkuk, look, I want you to give you a message and I want you to get this message and I want you to share this message with the people because I'm about to share a vision of how things are going to be. It's not about what things have been and, and it's not about what things are now, but it's a vision for the future. And, and can we all agree tonight that we are in a time where we need to have vision not on how it used to be when we were able to come to church on Sunday and interact, but a vision for right now when we are disconnected and we are in our homes, but we are connected by the internet for a time that even when things get better, that we still are going to have to do some common sense in the things that we do. I will submit to you tonight that we are in a time of a new vision a new dispensation from God on how we're going to be the people of God. And I can just go back and tell you something like the movie Back to the Future. God has just taken us back to how the church got started. The church didn't get started in big old buildings and big cathedrals with all kinds of seats and stuff in it. The church started in folks' homes where people came and hang out in such and such house and so-and-so's house and this person's house. Well, guess what? Uh, on Monday night, amen, uh, Mr. Dunbar was preaching from his couch in his house. On, on, on Tuesday night, Pastor Williams was teaching, preaching from the couch in his house. Last night, uh, Minister Tate, she was there preaching from a, a chair, a table in her house. Every night we got the word and we were uplifted and we were blessed but we weren't in coming from a building, but we were coming from folks' houses. We were going through the internet. We were on Zoom, but yet and still, we still were able to praise the true and living God. I know some folks may say, good God Almighty, they wish they could go back to how it was a few months ago, but I tell you right now, we got more churches on that are out there reaching more people than ever before. If you don't believe me, on Sunday, scroll down. Amen. And can I, can I share this for free? <laughs> and, and it used to be, folks said, we stayed in church so long, two, three hours. And now church services, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. 
And, and, and it's just amazing how we can get our praise on and then get on. Amen. Amen. I'm just telling you, I ain't trying to make it up. I'm just looking at what I'm observing here. But but let's let's dissect, dissect this text. I, I want to make sure we have time to get to Pastor Bain's class at seven. Amen. Uh, uh, to be a blessing, but but work with me here on, on, on how we're gonna work through this thing. How we gonna how we gonna all uh, capture this vision? <clears throat> so so first of all, as we look at this text, we find that that that, that God wants Habakkuk to write the vision. But can I say what's understood and God telling Habakkuk to write the vision? First of all, Habakkuk had to believe the had believe had to believe what he was gonna write. See, we don't, in this time that we're in now, we don't need preachers that are going around trying to tell folks what it, or how it used to be or tell folks we can't wait how it's going to get back like it used to be. But we need preachers to tell the truth that until we get a vaccine for this COVID-19, we got to practice social distancing. I was reading today the guidelines that the CDC uh, wanted to publish, amen, uh, but we got them anyhow. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google, amen. And folks still got to, in the church, they're saying they want you to be six feet apart unless you're from the same family. They're saying that we don't need to have choirs that maybe have some soloists or thing. Folks, this is letting us know until we get a herd, amen, all of us immunity to this COVID-19, we will not be able to have business as usual. So brothers and, and sisters of the gospel ministry, we got to believe this new vision, this new reality that God has set forth for us to let our people know, yes, we're going to still praise the Lord, but we're going to have to praise him in a different way. And, it's, and the bad part about this disease is that it would be great if you could get uh, uh, infected and know within a day or two, but it's two weeks in many cases before you even know that you're sick. And at that time, you, you, you infect so many other people. But in this new reality that we in, we need some, we need some preachers of the gospel that are going to believe this new reality of God and will stand out on his word and tell somebody that we can't do things the way we always have. Amen. And, and, and then once we accept the vision ourselves, once we believe it in our heart, then going back to our text, we got to make the vision known. That's why I said, right. We got to make it known. We got to make it known to people. Amen. And we make it known now that we're not just saying uh, just by the virtue on our Sunday morning or in our Bible study, but we got to make it known about this new reality and, 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 and how God's going to work with us and the goodness of the Lord on, on Facebook and, and on YouTube and Zoom and, and Twitter and TikTok and, and, and Instagram. And amen. A snail mail, whatever the case may be, we got to go out there and tell folks about this new reality and tell them that God is still a good God, that in the midst of our storm of COVID-19, while it seems like it's dark and drear, that we serve a God that in the midst of our storm, he's able to give us peace. That's the God I serve. And we got to let the folks know this vision. We got to let it be known. And notice next that when he says, write the vision, he said, write it on tablets. That means God wanted it to be permanent. Can I pause here and let you know, our uh, Black Baptists, we're so bad and not keeping up with our history and writing things down so we know, amen, about where, we, where we've come from. That's why you see behind me on the logo for our state convention, amen, three dates. That, 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 that talk about our history. In 1938, our, our Congress component was started as the Paradise BTU there in Walls, Mississippi. The, the reason why when you add it up from 1938 to 2020, that's more than, that's more than 70. But the reason why it's not more than 70 is because in 1954, 
when Dan Robinson died for 12 years, it went inactive to 1966, where in 1966, an independent Tyro Baptist Church, uh, Reverend L.S. Biles and others came together to establish the North Mississippi Baptist Educational Congress. And then the Lord blessed me to become president. It was a Congress uh, uh, 11 years ago when I became president, it was a Congress that wasn't a part of anything. And then in 2002, Mid-South Churches started as a group of churches interested in doing community outreach. And on May, the last uh, day of May, 2000, May 31st, 2012, we became a state convention. That's our history. That's written down. We need to tell the story. We need to tell our young people about the history. We need to tell them about Bloody Sunday. We need to tell them about Mega Evers. We need to tell them about Sojourner Truth. We need to write it down and share it with folks so our history won't be lost. And, and, and God is telling her back to write it down so folks won't forget it. And, and not only does it, does the, 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 the Habakkuk had to believe this message and then the message had to be uh, written down permanently. But, but the other next thing is that the vision had to be plain, plain. We, we don't, and, and see, y'all gonna say, yeah, uh, Pastor Mine is gonna say it should be written on a third grade level or middle school level. No, it should be written plain so a person that's well-educated can get it. And a person that maybe didn't get through elementary school can get it. Amen? But there's some folks that can't get it by reading. They need to see a picture. Some folks need to see a video. Some folks need to see it, need to hear it. Uh, amen. Uh, and, and spoken to them. What we got to do is make sure in whatever format, whatever way we can to make this, this new vision of how, how the world is plain to any and everybody. That's what uh, God was telling Habakkuk to do right here. But I love this next part. Not only amen, but you got to believe this vision and it's got to be a, a, a permanent uh, amen. And not only does it have to be plain, but it has to be practical. What do you mean, President Minor, about it being practical? It's good to tell folks that God is able. It's great to tell them that he will bring you through anything. But when you are facing a choice between going hungry or being homeless. It's hard to think about what we're saying in our words. Uh, we, we, we have to recognize that as C.L. Franklin was, we got to have a seven day a week gospel. We got to find ways to help folks get funds, amen, to take care of their housing and, and, and food to eat. That means we got to work, amen, together with government and nonprofit resources to take care of the total person. Maybe your church has been one of those churches that believe if we come to church on Sunday and hang out for a couple of hours and, and then in the middle of the week, come out for an hour of Bible study, that's all we got to do. But God wants a real church. God wants a working church. God wants some people to roll up their sleeves and, and connect the resources and help folks. Because when we got a vision, it's got to be practical. That means folks want to know, how can this help me in my everyday living? Oh, I hear you talking about when I get to glory. But right now, I, that ain't my story. I'm going through right now. I need to know that God is able to help me right now in the situation that I'm in. And the good news is, is that God is using our hands. He's using our feet. He's using our mind yes. to make some things happen. We don't need any lazy churches now just because you can't get out and do like you used to do. God wants us to be creative and get out and make a difference in folks' lives. And then once we go, great God Almighty, and look at all these other things, we got to make sure that when we share it with folks, we inspire them so much until they're able to run with the vision. And... The Bible scholars have disputed what uh, Habakkuk meant about running. Some said that it meant that you would get the message and really understand it. Others said it meant that it was like a herald 
that ran uh, before the army to tell of a great victory. But I want to use that uh, the interpretation of that part of the verse that when God was telling Habakkuk that when we share the message, we are all to be able to run. That means, brothers and sisters, when we're there sharing the word of God in this new reality, we ought to have folks so fired up until they're going about and telling some people that, yeah, we're going through right now. We are in a new normal, a new reality. But I got news for you that the God I serve is still on the throne. He's still making a way for us. Well, uh, we might be going through some social distancing where we are separated from each other. But I'm so glad, uh, really glad that the God I serve, he's never away from me. I wish I had a witness tonight could just say amen or just wave your hand where you are and know that God in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic is still good. He's not good when things are going amen. well, y'all, but he's good all the time. Uh, ain't the Lord all right? I am, I am so glad that the Lord brought me not part of the way I'm glad that he just didn't bring me most of the way, but I'm so glad that he brought me all, all the way. That means in the middle of this COVID-19, he won't leave me. He won't desert me. I, I know some folks listening to me tonight. I know some folks watching tonight. I know some folks going to see this in the future. You're there having some sleepless night and you feel like you're all alone. But I want you to know, God, my God, preach, man. right preach. there with you uh, all night and all day. The angels are watching over us uh, just when uh, you feel like uh, you're all alone. God, he's right there. Man, how you know that God is right there? Yeah. Well, if, I can, if you can raise your hand, yes, that's God moving yes, uh, in your hand. Yes. If you can move your head, yes. that's God moving uh, in your head. Yes. If you can stand up, uh, that lets you know uh, that God is still moving. I know this is an address. I know we got a class after this, but can just I, for a few minutes, just get happy and tell you that God is still good. Yeah, he's so good. Don't let the devil steal your joy. You ought to just tell somebody that he's good. So good. Oh, good. Monday, good. Tuesday good all week long. Yeah, I know he's good. But most of all, the reason I know that he's good is that his son, you know his name, Jesus. And he died. Anybody know he died? Oh, he died. He died. But early. <laughs> Early, somebody know what I'm talking about. Early Sunday morning, he got up uh, with power, all power in his hand. So catch the vision, catch the vision, and we gotta share it, folks, and let the people know that God is still able. He's still making things move. He's still a mighty, wonderful God. God bless you. God keep you. This is your address for tonight. Having been inspired by this message, Habakkuk 2 and 2, this great vision from God Almighty, we're going to offer you the opportunity to become a part of the family of Christ. It's real easy. If you've not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, all you got to do is pray this simple prayer. Lord, I'm a sinner. I accept Jesus as my personal Savior. Lord, I'm a sinner. 
I accept Jesus as my personal savior. That's it. But then we want to connect with you. Inbox us, uh, email us at info at the hill, hernando.com. Call us at 662-298-3584. We want to make arrangements with you to baptize you. Uh, amen. Uh, following, amen, the CDC guidelines. But we want to work with, walk with you on with you on your Christian journey. Well, maybe in this pandemic time, you've realized that you've kind of fallen by the wayside. You, you've backslid and you're not where you need to be. Well, you can just pray a simple prayer. Lord, I want to be restored. Lord, I want to be restored. That's it. And God will, uh, will through the indwelling power and presence of his Holy Spirit, will work with you. And we want to, again, connect with you as you go on your journey. And as we extend the invitation, we also, once again, uh, you can post in our uh, comments. You can post in our, our chat. You can email us. You can call us that we're going to be in prayer. Amen. In just a few minutes, we're going to pray. Amen. A lot of people that are going through. We know some of the names we won't be able to get on here on, on tonight's broadcast. Guess what? We got some prayer warriors that we're going to share those names and those requests, and they will be praying for them on this week. Amen. And again, having heard this message tonight, uh, uh, I hope that you've been inspired. I know I have been just hearing it again uh, to do more uh, in the work of the Lord. All right. Let's get ready to go to God in prayer. And of course, we hope that you will join us on Sunday. Amen at 9.45 for our virtual Sunday school followed by worship. Let us pray. Oh, Lord God, we come to you tonight, first of all, to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this time of our midweek worship and coming together as a church family. Lord, even though we're meeting uh, virtually and not face-to-face, -face, but through the indwelling power of your Holy Spirit, we just feel your presence working through all of us as we are worshiping you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, for the message tonight that you show through your prophet Habakkuk about the vision that we need to have as we go forth and doing your work, not sitting idly back by, but preparing ourselves for the work that you have set before us. Lord, we're realizing that there have been some names tonight that have been listed in our chat and our comments, some, some names that have been shared that are in need of prayer. Lord, tonight, we know some names. We want to send a special blessing upon the Applewhite family as they go through their time of bereavement, on the Smith family as they go through their time of bereavement. Lord, we want you to continue to bless those that are in the hospitals, even as we speak, that are battling with COVID-19. Strengthen them right now. And then, Lord, those that are just so hard-headed, so hard-hearted, that don't want to do the right thing, touch them right now that they would do the right things by wearing their masks and physically distance to help us, Lord, until we can get through this uh, time of this COVID-19 pandemic. And, Lord, we ask you to bless all those, Lord, that are poor, sick, and afflicted over this land and country. Lord, we thank you tonight for how you're still blessing and, and those that are recovering or have recovered and those that have been through so many different things that you're allowing them to come back and stand on their feet. We thank you right now. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless this world of ours and our world leaders. Help them lead the world in the way that you have it to go. Lord, bless our president, Donald J. Trump. Strengthen him on the way. Help him, Lord, to keep all the people of this nation at heart. Bless our president-elect, Joe Biden. Strengthen him right now. So get ready to prepare to lead our nation Lord, as you would have him to go. Lord, we ask you to bless our young people, our children that are going through virtual school. Bless the administrators, Lord, uh, the teachers. Lord, we ask you to, to touch our children that are going through a thing that they've never experienced be before. Regulate their mind. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. Bless us, Lord, on the hill. Help us to be not what we want to be, but what you want us to be. Bless all the church doors open in your name everywhere. All the pastors, ministers, teachers, evangelists of your word everywhere. Bless right now in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, give us strength for the rest of the week to go. And if it be your holy and divine will, allow us to assemble together again on Sunday for, for Sunday school, virtual Sunday school and virtual worship. But Lord, if we don't meet you here, we'll meet you over in glory. And Lord, we ask it right now and call it done. It's in Jesus' name. Jesus' name we pray. And now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and in my love of Christ, 
rest ruling about us henceforth now and forevermore. Let us all say together, amen. Amen. God bless you. The Lord said the same. We'll see you Sunday at 945. Have a good evening.